Yes, Shal. Yeah, uh, basically my question was like, I know we've seen like multiple example, but to what extent is like these, are like these examples uh, replicable? Or like, is it always a new thing for every startup? Like I know you told us that like everything was always new, but there's like, is there like concept that like different industries you can see like it's applicable to other examples? I mean, I mean, I think like, you know, uh, quite often the details are different, but there's some underlying principle that's a little bit common, right? And and that's one of the reasons I think it's important to um, um, to see many examples. I mean, obviously, like I can't give you guys an infinite number of examples, but like, you know, I did try my best to give examples that I felt touched on the same theme, had some minor differences. Um, uh, but but there is an art to like what you take away from an example, right? Um, so for instance, if we take a look at the Dropbox example on um, on uh, MVP design, like if your takeaway is you're launching a new product, post a demo video on Dig, then you're taking away the wrong thing, right? That's not the most important lesson. Um, I'm not sure. Have, has anyone here ever heard of the um, of the website slash like newsletter product hunt? Anyway, you guys can check it out. It's it's basically like uh, it's a website, and you can sign up for like this email where they like send you ping you like cool products. And like one thing that like people do like to do is like every startup like posts a link to their product on product hunt, or they like you know create a you know, subreddit on Reddit where they, you know, put a link to their website. Like, the moment the cat is out of the bag on that, everyone is fucking doing it and you don't get attention from it because it's a sea of like crap, right? Like I keep like every single time I get an email from Product Hunt now, I'm like, should I just unsubscribe? Because this is all donkey shit, right? Um, so like, yeah, like doing, doing what, drop like the detail of what Dropbox did, which is like, you know, capture a little bit of attention by going to a place where your early target market is, um, and um, and 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 like, you know, get try to get yourself a bit of free, you know, free like target customer awareness from this. Like the moment they did it and had success, everyone started doing it, and it started becoming a shit show. And the moment it's a shit show, it's no longer quite as useful. Right. And so if you take the lesson, be part of the shit show, it's probably not going to work as effectively for you as it did for them. Right. And that's not really the lesson to get from Dropbox. Right. The lesson to get from Dropbox was actually, I think, much more fundamental, which was that they really and, and, and is going to be relevant sometimes in many scenarios, which was their observation was like, look, everyone talks about an MVP and says it's okay for an MVP not to be perfect. It just needs to be minimally viable. And they always tend to emphasize it can suck like this, it can suck like that, right? But you know what? For it to be viable, it needs to be awesome in the most important dimensions for the target audience that you're going for. Dropbox realized the thing is not awesome if the backend infrastructure is bad and it deletes your files, which is what I experienced with the early entrance in the market. Why does that happen? It's not because the people who went to market first were like, oh, I, they made the mistake of thinking it was okay for files to be deleted. No, it's just actually making this work technologically is difficult. There's a bunch of technological hurdles that, you know, as, a uh, non-engineer MIT grad, I don't fully grasp, um, um, but that actually take real effort to solve and real time to solve um, and, and su like somewhat substantial resources beyond just time. Um, and they knew they couldn't do it. They could not get that part good enough with the amount of resources they had. And so they could have launched with something that was bad on that dimension but they knew they would actually do damage to whoever they got as a customer and to the ability to get those folks to market for them, right? So then they knew they could not launch a product to market that would have the problems that the other early, earlier entrants had. 
So they realized that one, but they also knew that if they waited until they had that thing done right, it would take them time. And if they didn't learn from the customer during that time, and they didn't validate anything during that time, that they would also die. And so they needed to find a way to learn without taking the risk of giving a real product in the hands of folks that was not vi minimally viable because it sucked in an important dimension. That's the lesson to get from Dropbox, right? You're, you kind of abstract away from, a, from the, the detail and you try to get to the heart of the matter. The heart of the matter is the demo video helped them learn and validate without needing to put the product actually in the hands of folks. And figuring out how to do that, can I accelerate my learning without taking the risk with a bad MVP? That is a general principle that I think is easy for all of us to understand, but is difficult for all of us to apply in a specific situation. And the reason why it's difficult to apply is it is almost kind of like one size fits one as opposed to one size fits all. And so you need to realize the importance of kind of being creative here, right? And not just like doing X because everyone else does X. Like sometimes you can do that. Like there's some rules of thumb that you can do, right? Um, like get yourself some cheap PR, right? If you have a sense of like what sort of like shenanigans help you with that, then you can, you know, you probably got a recipe you can use many times over, right? Like, you know, you know so there, there, are, there are some tricks that people can use, but just remember that like once the trick is well understood, it becomes a shit show and it no longer becomes useful because usually these tricks require you to do something that stands out a little bit. And if everyone is doing it, you're not standing out from doing it. So you need to find the next way to stand out that achieves that logical objective, which is accelerate your learning without taking a risk that you like do damage. The, de the details matter. But that's a good question, yeah. Uh, I mean, like I actually, that might be the most important question, right? The most important question is how do we, like how do we actually learn from these examples? And it, you know, my view is it's less about memorizing all the detail of the examples. And it's more about memorizing the right skeleton of the example. And then realizing, you know, we all have a, the same skeleton, but we all wear like different clothes uh, and whatever other stuff that people wear. I don't know. Um, um, and that like the reason why things look different once you add the other stuff on top of the skeleton is, is not that everyone except for one person is doing it wrong. It's that everyone is a little bit different. Same thing, like the, the broad principle, do everything you need to do to learn quick without taking a risk of putting a shitty product out there that will just crush the whole thing going forward. Um, like that's the common skeleton. And like everything that you see that, you know, you can see a bunch of things that look different at the detail level uh, among successes. Um, and probably those differences kind of were rather important as well, but it's impossible to like teach. I mean, I don't know, I, I haven't figured out how to teach that. Right. And like, if you're it, like, and like some people are really good at coming up with creative answers to stuff, right. To thinking outside of the box that once they have the right principle, like they come up with things, you're like, wow, I mean, I would have never thought of that. Like, and, and some people like that's not their strength. It doesn't mean they're bad. It just means it's, that's not their strength. Like all of us suck in most things and all of us are pretty good at a few. Right. And knowing what you're good at and what you're not, not that great at is pretty important. And if you know, you're, you're a person who's not necessarily the best at doing that, you know, thinking outside of the box, coming up with quick, creative, scrappy solutions, then maybe, and, but, but you still want to start something, then probably you need to find yourself a, you know, a partner that is good at that because that'll probably be important, right? Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure to what extent it can be taught. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, anyway, I'm not sure if that helps. But any other questions?
Yeah, I got, I got to add a question. Um, I just came up with it on the spot. How popular is like a demo video in terms of launching an, an MVP? Because to me, it kind of seems just like the easiest, cheapest way out for a company to kind of get some feedback, um, even if that might not be the best feedback just because they're just launching a video. Um, yeah. I feel like they could have maybe done something more creative. I haven't really thought of what they could have done. I mean, again, like, remember, like, at the time, they're what, like, part of it is it's difficult for you to put yourself in that moment in time where people hadn't made that, like, an MVP, right? Like, because now you're like, I've seen a bunch of demo videos. I mean, like, I mean, think about it. What has happened since then, right? You You've had the like rise of these crowdfunding platforms where people make these fancy videos of something that doesn't exist yet, right? And so like you've seen thousands of these things now, right? And so now you're like, this doesn't seem creative. But at the time, you know, it was creative. You know, the person who invented the wheel was pretty fucking creative. And now we're like, a wheel is a wheel. We take it for granted, right? Um, like they were the first one to make that really core to like, well, okay, look, they did not invent the demo video. Let's be clear. Right. But like making it a core element of the MVP and trying to make sure you do the demo video and your other stuff around it to get the demo video specifically in front of the people that, you know, you will target first to, to successfully invite feedback to successfully get them to take actions that validate their interest so that you can go back to the VC and say, look, this is all the stuff we've learned from this. Help us fund building this, right? Like, like doing that in a disciplined, focused manner, that was, you know, like, that, like that's really part of the genius of, 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 of Drew Houston. Like he is viewed as like a, a startup founder that like, almost all VCs universally respect and have a lot of faith in. And, and this was like ground, you know, ground zero for him in terms of like, um, you know, building that reputation. Um, so um, yeah, I mean, that's the thing is like, there's a lot of things that once, uh, once other people hear it and appreciate it, it no longer seems creative anymore, but it was fucking creative before it was ever out there. Right. Um, there's so many things like that, right? Um, in fact, like the most creative things, once they're accepted, seem trivial and simple. But if you put yourself in at that time, it was like, you know, sounded insane or sounded silly, you know? It's like you know, Twitter, like, <laughs> before, before people like use that shit, like most, most people are like, like, what the fuck is this? Like, will people even want to do this? And it's not like it was like this brilliant technical idea. It was a simple insight about, you know, um, how people want to communicate and connect. And, you know, and people still like, remember, like you need to think with Twitter, like Facebook already existed. So people knew that like there was a demand for social media, but yet even with that people, did not get, most people were like, why the hell would people want to tweet? Like, or why would people want, you know, um, a model of social networking where it was more, um, um, it was more pull instead of push, right? Facebook, like you choose who to let follow you. And, you know, Twitter was more like the follower gets to choose who they follow is such a simple difference, doesn't require solving a technical problem, and yet it created an entirely new segment or vertical of social media. Anyway, um, um, so anyway, I would, uh, I, I would always caution against calling something not creative after the fact. Because many, many things seem obvious after the fact. There's a lot of things in the world that are simple once you see it, but that you would have never come up with yourself. Um, um, and um, so I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't downplay what they did there. But what I would say is like, you know, now that everyone knows that like a demo video is an easy thing to do, 
Like a lot of people do it. And the moment a lot of people do it, it's not an effective device for standing out. And, you know, as a startup, you need to find ways to stand out, right? Because standing out is the best way to get attention with, with limited resources. Because things that stand out spread virally more than things that don't. Um, and so, yeah, what worked in the past is not necessarily what will work today. Um, and so like, I'm not sure what the, you know, even if making a demo video is cheap, I'm not sure what the benefit of a demo video is today. It's, it's probably positive and it's probably sufficiently cheap to do a demo video that the economics still work, but the economics work because the cost is low, not because the benefit is high. And things where the benefit is not high are not going to fundamentally move the needle probably. So now I no longer think that like demo videos are, are like, are pivotal, but for, for Dropbox, I actually felt, feel that it was pivotal. But again, the lesson, the lesson of Dropbox is not, is not demo video per se. Although, so my labeling might, might, uh, might mislead a little bit there. I'm not trying to say everyone make your MVP a demo video. Uh, it was really more about like when you cannot put, and by, by the way, holding all out SQL, you would rather put the actual product because a demo video will get you some feedback. It won't get you as much feedback as someone playing with it, right? So if you could do this and get the actual product in their hands, you would do it morning, noon, and night, right? So you only do it when it's not, like this, but like it, it takes sufficient time, resource and effort that you feel like you need that intermediate signal before you go. By the way, the demo video also has costs, right? Because it's not just Dropbox that learns about customer wants when Dropbox puts the video. It's out there in public domain. Their competitors see it. Their competitors can read the Hacker News page with all the comments, right? So it's not like there aren't these other, you know, issues with a demo video. Because there are externalities, learning externalities. Um, and so, you know, if you're developing a proprietary product where like the proprietary element of your product is the design choice, not the technology, you, you might want to be a little bit more careful with that. Right. So, you know, there, there's, there's nuance in all of this stuff. 